The future is now, people. Before we get into what I'm talking about, I just want to introduce you to a new seller here, AliExpress is Yang Feng Model Store. I bring this up because when I pulled out this model out of this box, I mean it showed up safe and all, but it's a little bit sketchy. I don't know. So what are we talking about? This thing. This is exactly how it came out of the bubble wrap. This thing just taped to the box. I, I have a... I kind of doubt this is a new product. Why would this just be? It can't be a new product, right? This would have to be inside the box. Am I correct? So, I just wanted to bring that up about this seller. You can see this tape here. So, this wouldn't, you know, if you're trying to give this model away as a gift, it's probably not a good idea. I've never heard of this brand here. This is probably one of those uh, brands that just shows up temporarily to avoid licensing legal disputes. HRN model, okay. We got a little picture here. All right, Nate. Yeah, so no, uh, it does say 164, but nothing else. All right, we'll put this aside for now. So, if you don't know what this car is, it's called a Lincoln Futura concept car. Only one of them was ever made. By the way, this cover, it's, it works, but it's not super tight, so be mindful of that. If you if if it falls out, that antenna's gone. Okay. So the Lincoln Futura was uh, styled by Ford's lead stylist Bill Schmidt and John Najar, and it was hand built by Ghia in Turin, Italy, like Carmen Ghia fame. And uh, it cost two hundred fifty thousand dollars back then in the mid fifties, which is equivalent to two point four million dollars in twenty twenty one. So this was obviously a pretty expensive concept car. It's what the 50s thought the future would be. I don't know if you guys think this looks futuristic. It does look like Futurama. <laughs> you know that cartoon show, The Simpsons uh, creator? Okay, so then anyways, this car was displayed on the auto show circuit in 1955. And then it was later on purchased by George Barris, who's known for making a lot of movie cars. He was tasked by a production studio to make the first Batmobile and he had a very short timeline to do it and he had this car just sitting in the back of his warehouse so he modified this one and only concept car and that is the Batmobile that we know Adam West was driving around. Okay. So when I saw this model online I originally just thought well that's a weird one. I'm hoping maybe they'll make a Batmobile, but I have not seen these guys make a Batmobile. So, I I don't know, just out of boredom I decided to buy this, see what it's like. I'm going to guess it's a resin model, just based off the price and the fact that it looks pretty spectacular already. I'm not going to take it off the stand because look at that tiny antenna. If I drop it, this thing is, that, that thing's gone. Okay, so we got this placard here. It's super, very, very reflective. It's it's a mirror. This apparently is some sort of limited edition. And here in 1955, there's a text, right? Okay. So what is interesting is if this brand is unlicensed, it's quite interesting that they would put their brand on here. Okay, let's look at the side view here. So low slung. And this paint is spectacular. I believe there's a red version of this model if you like red more. And uh, I don't think paint rash is an issue because uh, this is made of plastic. It's, you know, the, you couldn't get this sharp of a corner with die cast metal unless you only use the mold a few times. Same here, it's so sharp and that's what the beauty of using plastic is. Um, I don't know why some people are hesitant or scared of plastic. Uh, because I have some, <coughs> excuse me, I have some Matchbox from the early 1970s and they have plastic bases and plastic interiors and they look fine. So, I mean, those, those models were like 50 years old or 40, 50 years old and they don't have any problems. So plastic is a really stable material. Just don't put it in the sun and you should be all right. Okay, well, I guess the tires, I mean, you got these white walls, they're concentric. I assume they must be made of some sort of rubbery material. And then you get these uh, chromed out dish hubcap looking wheels here. Or maybe they're billet aluminum wheels, but you can just see the reflection as they move it around. 
right? So it's very shiny, including the big chrome strip running from the front bumper all the way to the back bumper. It might look black in certain instances, or it might look silver. It's just chrome. So, okay. And then there's some sort of a text there. One would have to imagine it must say Futura. Let's see if we can get in a little closer. Yeah, I guess that's Futura. Unfortunately, it looks like a, a little bit of extra. It's just floating off there. Okay. And what's that? Oh, all right, that's just some dust. Or it's part of that. Oh, it's part of that graphic. That's too bad. We'll have to see what the other side looks like. Okay, look at that paint. Really nice. This is a four times magnification. Hmm, maybe that's a defect there. You notice how smooth it is. It's not much orange peel. All right. Let me back out a little bit. Okay, whoa, look at this front end. It looks like a sea fish about to eat you or something like that. And then look at these the crazy pattern in these headlights. It's like a po potato masher or something, or you know, like a you're gonna extrude meat or pasta through that thing. It's really interesting. I'm wondering if it's made of metal. I don't know. I don't know. Possibly it's photo etched metal. I can't tell with my own eyes or the screen, but it's obviously really well detailed. And then you got this grill here. Yeah, that sound feels like it's plastic. And these tiny little lights recesses back in there. So it's very nice. It's such a weird looking. I don't know. What, is it a frog? A really widened out flat frog? Or like a fish? And then we got this here. That's a foil sticker of some sort. So that's nice. And those lights are way back in there, I think. Yeah, they're pretty far back. Okay. Interesting little hood line here. I don't understand where the rest of it goes. Like, where, there's no brake here. So I don't know how this would open on the real car. Hmm. Just look at the real photos, but I don't see it. Okay. Some sort of power bulge, I imagine. So the interior is quite a highlight for sure. It's a. Uh, I would say it's a creamy yellow. Looks like corn soup kind of color. I'm not sure what your screen was going to show. There's some texture here, of course. The seat backs are chromed plastic. And then you got the yellow seat with the black in inlay there. It's all the same molding, just paint. I can actually see a tiny bit of yellow showing through right there. Sorry, let me hit the focus there. Okay. But yeah, you can see some silver here. That's a separate piece, I think. Some silver there. You can see a little bit of the chrome of the seat base right there. So the dashboard itself has some silver dots. Look at these tiny dots there. That's nicely done. Oh, I'm not noticing this badge looks like it's gold. Hmm. Yeah, it's gold. Because the bumper's chrome. That's clearly a goldish color. Okay, sorry if I'm hopping around. Hmm. All right, so the dash is all chromed plastic, and it's got a little chrome um, rear view mirror there. And then, well, yeah, I guess that's it. The steering column itself is the same body color as the rest of the car, but then it's got silver in the middle, and then a black rim. Ooh, look at this. This is one of the rare cars where you actually have gas pedals and brake pedals. Let me try to get in there a little closer for you. This is like the second one I have that has these pedals down here. The only other one I have is a by Titan 64. So that's nice. Really nice. So look at the door panel. It's also color coded to the rest of the body. And there's a little switch there probably for like electric windows or the top mechanism. Okay. So that's a pretty cool interior. I am noticing this splotchiness here. Is this soft glue? I can't tell. It might be hard glue. Okay. And then this antenna. You can see the rear view mirror through it. I don't know what this was supposed to be on this future car of the 50s. I mean, it looks like a crazy like antenna you'd find on like a, a spaceship of the 50s. 
Oh boy. So unfortunately under this magnification, the paint wasn't laid on very well. It, it can't be paint rash, but it's just not, it wasn't done well. And here, seems like there's some running here of the clear coat. So that's unfortunate. All right, let's see here. We got the future on the license plate. And this whole thing looks like it's chrome plastic. But I don't think there's anything else in these taillights. No, I think that's just the same chrome. But you know, I don't see anything on the real photograph either. I have a suspicion these might be the exhaust ports. Like exhaust comes out of here. Okay. And then these things are the taillights, this red here. So let me try to get a side angle or something. I'm going to get some more light in there. So it's like a reflective sticker or something. It's a red sticker. Yeah. But again, you can see how thin. Look how thin this uh, plastic is here. You could never get that out of die cast metal. This is as thin as the pick itself. So yeah, die cast metal would not be able to come out of a mold reliably that way. But uh, resin can. Plastic, you can get some fine details. Well, so in summary, I would say it's not a perfect model. I found a few flaws for sure. Let's look, let's look at the badge on this side. It's too close, unfortunately. Well, I don't know if it's messed up or not. It, it definitely looks cleaner than the other side. It doesn't have floating fragments on it, right? So there's that, two horizontal lines at the end of the logo. Uh, so this is where I think, I think these two pieces here are supposed to be right here. Right, so that's, that's too bad. So, is it possible that, you know, this was a demo model just sitting in the cellars? I just don't think it was new. It wasn't wrapped, you know, this, this cardboard wasn't wrapped in any sort of additional plastic. And that's just odd. Most of these crystal case things, you have this, and then this whole thing is wrapped in some cellophane or something. So that was not the case with this seller here. So, yeah, I guess, sorry, AliExpress seller number, Xiang Feng model store. I would not recommend buying from these guys, at least one of these more expensive models. So this is the additional cockpit piece here, and it's nicely done. You know, the chrome plastic is its not overrunning or anything like that. It's relatively transparent considering the curvature of it, like here, well, maybe not. No, well, it's definitely warped. Let's see if it fits on here any, any well or poorly or what. It looks really weird. Uh, let's go back to the photograph comparison. It just looks really tall, that canopy. I guess, well, I do feel like it's still a little tall compared to this photograph. It just doesn't seem as tall as on this model, right? Look at that. It seems a bit goofy. You know, in fact, yeah, so there's those, I think these are exhaust tips, exhaust ports there. You, you see there's no color in there. They're not brake lights. I'm pretty sure exhaust is coming out of those. So this turned out to be a really interesting model. It's not 100% perfect, at least under four times magnification, but uh, in general, it's a still a pretty nice model. I'm really happy I got it. And uh, it's such a unique vehicle. It's so different from the Batmobile that I don't think that whoever made this was thinking about making a Batmobile later on. Unless maybe they literally change the mold. They take their, this mold and then add or remove to it to make a Batmobile. That is a possibility. Anyways, I would love to see a Batmobile at this level of detail. I would definitely buy it. Um, so it's an interesting take on what the 1950s thought the future was going to be like. It obviously didn't end up looking like this but that's the charm of collecting these models. Uh, I hope that HRN sticks around and makes some other interesting uh, subjects. I'm going to have to do a little search for these guys, see if there's any more information on this brand here. 
I do question that seller from AliExpress. You know, the fact that this wasn't wrapped in cellophane is a bit alarming. So I think it was a used model. And then I guess I'll just leave with a quotation from the original Batman, Adam West. This money goes towards building better roads. We all must do our part.